Welcome to this video on the topic of statistics. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can use our graphical calculators to draw histograms as shown over here for us. To do this, we're going to use the data that we had in the previous video to then generate the same graph that we have over here. Now to begin, what we need to do is we need to navigate to our top menu on our calculator by clicking menu and then we press 2 to get into statistics mode. After that, I'm now going to clear my memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across to F6 and go to Del All. This will remove whatever residual data I had in my calculator from the memory itself. I don't want to be working with a calculator that's already got stuff in it, otherwise I might make an error. Now going up, I need to import this data shown over here into list 1. To do this, I'm going to simply just key it all in. Every time I put in a new data point, I press execute and there it is. Now all of my data is currently in memory. I have 25 data points. To go to the top, I simply press down on the D-pad here. Now next step is I want to be able to graph this, so I'll press F6 until the graph shows up, as shown here. To do this, I then click F1. Now I might be tempted to just press F1 to graph it, but there's no guarantee it's going to produce a histogram. Rather, what I need to do is actually set it up. So I'll go over to F6 over here to click on Set. After that, I need to navigate down to this guy over here. It says Graph Type. We need to make sure that we've got it set to hist, so shown over here. Your one might be different if you've got an older calculator, but basically you're looking something to suggest we're doing a histogram. Now this will change the data we have in here. What I'm then going to do is navigate down and make sure that this list corresponds to the list we have over here. So in this one our data is in list 1, so what that means is I need to set this to list 1. In this case I click on list, so F1 and then I'll set it to list 1. If my data was in list 2, I'd set it to list 2. We're done with this now, so we'll click exit. Next step is we click on F1 to go to graph. It will then present us with these settings. Now, I want to replicate the graph that I have over here. So in my graph, it starts at 140 and it goes up to 190. The class interval is 10 units. So what that means is I type in 140 here and then 10 over here. You can do other ones, but it's going to look different to this. For this, we're just replicating this graph. I then click Execute. This will then represent the graph that I have over here, shown over here. Now to pull some statistics from this graph, we can simply click on F1, and lo and behold, we get all of our statistical data that we'll be learning about in a few lessons time. Now we're not constricted to just having a class interval of 10. The power of the calculator is that we can change the class interval with relative ease. So say I want to get a finer resolution of observing this graph, I can change the class interval from 10 units to 5. Lo and behold, we get a histogram where there's finer resolution shown here. Or if we don't need as much detail, we could increase the class interval. So from 5 we can take it up to say 20. Of course, what we find is that our data gets further bunched together. However, the power of using a calculator to graph or to examine what the histogram will look like is that it gives us a bit of foresight. So basically what you want to do is you want to organize your data in such a way that it's meaningful to read. So you can use your calculator to first graph it easily and then based on what you think is the most suitable way to represent the data, you can then draw it down manually like so. So in summary, what we had a look at in this video was how we can use our technology to graph histograms.